Unacceptable. Should mum and dad also face criminal charges? West Australia wants it. Do we want it? Hello, I'm Mark Sainsbury. Welcome to Close Up. That story shortly. Also tonight, we follow the caring Kiwi doctors on their own personal mercy mission to mend broken lives. Are we fantastically dull and bland? An Aussie travel writer takes some cheap shots at New Zealand. Is he fair dinkum? None of us will ever forget those images of the Boxing Day tsunami and its aftermath. The bodies, the destruction, the hopelessness of it all. And I guess we all thought it'd be great to actually do something. Well, while we were thinking about it, Taranaki doctor Tom Mulholland got off his butt and did it. He lined up a mate, another doctor, Mark Shaw, who's an expert in tropical medicines. They collected 30 cartons of desperately needed medical supplies and set sail. An expedition to the Indonesian island of Nias. This place is remote. It's off the West Sumatran coast. And it's also one of the closest islands to the epicentre of the earthquake. Mike Valentine was on board as well. It's just like, brings it all back. Just the half collapsed building, just, you just think of the terror and the, the noise and the, the screaming, you know, and trying to grab your little kids. For New Plymouth GP and emergency doctor Tom Mulholland, this is like reliving a nightmare. It's just so terrifying, you just want to run away and go home. So it's good to come back and help. As a surf camp doctor, he survived a tidal wave in Java 10 years ago. Now he's back to another Indonesian island to help and assuage some guilt. The reason that I'm back is I think I maybe feel a little bit guilty because when I was in a tsunami 10 years ago, I helped all the people around me that I could see, but I just wanted to go home and see my family. And I guess I was there for three days, but I almost like I feel like I ran away. With him, friend and colleague Mark Shaw, Hamilton GP the and fam, tropical diseases expert, and the doctor aboard Sir Peter Blake's ill-fated expedition. Yeah. So you're from the other side, he's from the other side yeah. there. We have walked only 100 metres, but the personal accounts are already chilling. 60 people dead, five in your family. Yeah. 300 died on this small peninsula, but this grieving father warns us there is much worse to come. Sarapaga village, seven people alive, yeah. everybody dead. Yeah. The dead have long been buried, but the devastation remains largely untouched. <laughs> and from the home still standing, calls for assistance. In this house alone, three babies in need of treatment. The first of hundreds of sick the Kiwi doctors will examine over the next few days. Here we go. That's okay, Baba. Okay, Baba. It's a move initiated a week earlier by from New Zealand donors, which has to be transferred soon season. A little bit swell. It's coming from that depression up in Sri Lanka. It's all we want to hear, Tom. It's going to be a typhoon, mate. There is a typhoon. The weather, though, is kind, but there are other hurdles to overcome once we reach Nias. Transport for one. With roads wiped out, a handcart becomes the only means of getting medical supplies to the needy. And there are so many of them. Herman, how long has he been sick like this? It's been six months. Six months. It is a church hall in one of many makeshift refugee camps on the island, and there are a few cases more pitiful than this. He's having a seizure now. He has really bad epilepsy. I will give him some medicine now to stop the seizure, OK? Um, but it will. I need to put it up his back end, OK? She has been isolated too from most of the community. It just seems to be... Yeah. Wow, it's just, it's just awful. I thought it was a, it was a blanket, and they just lifted up this, this mat, and there's this Poor little stroke. kid. Well, twenty-year-old kid. Yeah, he was twenty-year-old. He looked like a kid. Six, yeah. He's all wizened and just looking up at you with these helpless eyes, and then having a seizures. You just want to cry, but you have to keep it together and try and organise something for him and do the best you can. But 
When you look down, I mean, it's like stuff you see on TV, really, isn't it? You know, you see the flies on them. As the doctors soon discover, this is more about the health realities of a third world country than tsunami relief. There are few left injured or ill by the wave itself, but there are thousands wanting health care. Good. At each clinic, Tom and Mark are overwhelmed by patients. Not surprising when you learn there are just six doctors on this island of 600,000 people. Yeah, here's the pain when he coughs. Okay. And then did back home there would be at least 600 doctors, and it comes as no surprise that some of the patients attempt to hoodwink their help. I'm sure they invented a few things just to stockpile their medications and even one day there was a patient uh, that would seen one of us the day before who turned up with another complaint just to stockpile medicines and you start to sit there and think, oh, I could have done this anywhere mm. and then next thing in the next hour you see four people come in that are, you know, probably only got days to live from malaria, um, other infections. So it's a bit of been a Huge bit of a roller, roller coaster ride, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. A roller coaster in oppressive 37 degree heat and high humidity. <laughs> and as word of the free clinic spreads. Um, the, more, the more people you see, the more that there are to see. Quite, feel quite tearful, really. Do you think you can make a difference here? I feel at the moment, no, I'm not making any difference at all. I'm just sort of putting my finger in the, in, in the, in the dike. We're trying to do our best. It's as best we can do. But it's, uh, it's, it's a hard call when you see so much distress. Just a BP check follow-up. Not helped by people like this, a village official who barged his way in front of six children for a blood pressure check. Do you want me to listen to your heart too? No and to tell of families less fortunate than him. Died. Nine people in one house. Oh, six another. Yeah. It's a difficult and sobering journey to that village, a community now deserted apart from a grieving man in a semi-catatonic state. A kilometre inland, there's little left of the village, and the few survivors still too frightened to return to retrieve their scattered possessions and we're told they're determined never to come back. In the rubble when you're walking through here you see child's jandals, um, yeah. child's toys, bibles, photos of people that probably have passed on and you can't help thinking about your own children. But here little things mean a lot. A woman's life saved thanks to a diagnosis and malaria medicine. Okay, you're most welcome. The grateful uh, smile of a mother whose child will get better thanks to a Kiwi doctor's determination to try and make a difference. Certainly, we go home, I go home changed, and one man said to me on the motorbike today as I was getting a lift, it's a poor man who always wants more, and a rich man who is happy with what he has. And if you look at the amount of goods that we have at home, uh, you wonder why you work so hard, you want more and more and more, and as they say, the only problem about being in the rat race is that even if you win you're still a rat and uh, I think uh, certainly going home um, will change the way materially that I look, th look at things. Oh, oh, it's a privilege to come and do this really. A very deep privilege and something I'm, I'm quite overwhelmingly proud of. And as Mike Valentine showed us there, they have good cause to be proud. You may have noticed the T-shirts in that story with Surf Aid on them. Surf Aid was set up by some Gisborne surfers and has been vaccinating kids on the surf islands for the last four years. There's a new program underway now to vaccinate the kids on NIAS. If you want to help, the address is P.O. Box 55 Gisborne. That's P.O. Box 55 Gisborne. Coming up, kids out of control.